Did you know that if we could extract all the salt from the world's oceans and spread it evenly across Earth's land surface, it would create a layer over 500 feet thick? That's about the height of a 40-story office building. Now, imagine that colossal amount of salt dissolved in our oceans. Where does this mind-boggling amount of salt even come from? Rivers constantly flow towards the ocean, carrying minerals and sediments. But why don't they make the ocean saltier over time? What prevents the salt from endlessly accumulating? How can organisms even survive such salty conditions? And overall, why is the ocean salty? Get ready to unravel these salty mysteries today! But before we dive in, please give this video a like! It helps to make videos like this possible. Let's get started! So, why is the ocean salty? To understand this, we need to go on a journey. A journey that starts with a single raindrop. Imagine a raindrop falling from the sky. As it forms and descends, it absorbs carbon dioxide from the air. This creates a weak acid called carbonic acid. It's actually the same stuff that gives fizzy drinks their bite, but in rainwater, it's much, much weaker. When this slightly acidic rain hits the ground, it doesn't just sit there, it flows over rocks and soil. And here's where the magic happens. The acid in the rainwater slowly erodes the rocks, breaking them down and releasing tiny amounts of minerals and salts. These minerals and salts hitch a ride with the rainwater as it flows into streams and rivers. But wait a minute, if rivers are carrying all these salts and minerals, why don't they taste salty? The answer lies in the constant flow of fresh water. Rivers and streams are continually replenished by rainfall and melting snow. This constant influx of fresh water keeps the concentration of dissolved minerals relatively low. It's like constantly adding fresh water to a glass of salt water. Eventually, you'll dilute it so much that you can't taste the salt anymore. But here's the thing. All these rivers and streams eventually flow into the ocean. And unlike rivers, the ocean doesn't have an outlet. It's like a giant bathtub with no drain. The water can leave through evaporation, but the salts and minerals are left behind. Over millions of years, this process has been happening continuously. Rivers all over the world have been delivering their mineral payload to the oceans, gradually increasing their salt content. It's a slow process, but given enough time, and of course we're talking geological time here, it adds up to a lot of salt. But rivers aren't the only source of salt in our oceans. Let's dive deeper, literally, and explore another crucial contributor to ocean salinity, hydrothermal vents. Deep beneath the ocean surface, there are cracks in the Earth's crust. Seawater seeps into these cracks and gets close to the hot magma beneath it. The water heats up. We're talking temperatures over 570 degrees Fahrenheit and undergoes a series of chemical reactions. This superheated water becomes a mineral cocktail. It loses some elements, like oxygen and magnesium, but picks up others, including iron, zinc, and copper. When this mineral-rich water is released back into the ocean through hydrothermal vents, it brings with it a fresh supply of dissolved minerals, including, of course, salt. Also, there's something called salt domes. These are massive underground deposits of salt that form over millions of years. They're found all over the world, both on land and under the sea. In places like the Gulf of Mexico, these salt domes can contribute to the ocean's saltiness when they're exposed to seawater. So we've got rivers carrying minerals from eroded rocks, hydrothermal vents pumping out mineral cocktails, and salt domes slowly dissolving. It's a global-scale salt factory. Now, things got even more interesting, because not all of the minerals that end up in the ocean stay there. Some are removed by biological processes. Marine organisms use certain minerals to build their shells or skeletons. When these organisms die, their remains often sink to the ocean floor effectively removing those minerals from the water. However, two ions in particular tend to stick around, sodium and chloride. These are the main components of table salt, and together they make up about 85% of all the dissolved ions in seawater. Magnesium and sulfate account for another 10%, while the remaining 5% is a mix of other ions in very small concentrations. But if I said that rivers have been carrying salt to the oceans for millions of years, and there are all these other sources adding salt too, why isn't the ocean getting saltier and saltier? Well, it turns out that the ocean saltiness is in a delicate balance. When seawater evaporates in shallow lagoons or arms of the sea, it can form evaporite deposits. These are essentially dried up seabed areas where the salt's been left behind. 
Over geological time, these deposits can become buried, effectively removing that salt from the ocean. Also, and this might surprise you, the saltiness of the ocean isn't uniform. It varies from place to place and even from season to season. Generally, the ocean is less salty near the equator in the poles and saltier in the mid-latitudes. Why? Well, near the equator, there's a lot of rainfall, which dilutes the surface water. In polar regions, melting ice adds fresh water to the ocean. But in the mid-latitudes, evaporation often exceeds precipitation, leaving behind saltier water. Many marine organisms have adapted to live in this salty environment. Some can even use the difference in salt concentration between their bodies and the surrounding water to their advantage, like salmon using it to sense their way back to their spawning grounds. But we humans aren't built that way. So if you don't want to get dehydrated fast, it's best to avoid drinking seawater to quench your thirst. Anyway, what you can do is show off a bit the next time someone asks, hey, do you know why the ocean's water's salty? If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more explorations. See you in the next video.